year, but they have one of the most dynamic scorers in the country, an accomplished coaching staff, and a program on the rise. Tough test for Richie Riley and his Colonels against an Idaho team that will try to slow it down. They'll push with pace, but no one has been able to get into the 70s against Idaho this season. They're regularly playing those 70 to 65 games that Nichols despises. Colonels come in averaging 94 points per game, but they did lose on Friday night at home against UL. Louisiana picking up a 105-80 victory against the Colonels. Nichols did lead it 62-52 to with 15 minutes to play before a 21-0 run by the Raging Cajuns. Colonels 4-4 four four on the year. Idaho 4-2. We'll hear from Richie Riley, second-year coach of the Colonels, up next on ESPN Radio. Basketball back at home for a Sunday night matchup against Idaho. Richie Riley joining us following a tough home loss to Lafayette, but this is one of the best teams in the Sun Belt Conference. You now take on the preseason favorites out of the big sky. You knew what this weekend would be all about. What did you see offensively from your team on Friday that gives you some indication that you are close to being one of the best offenses in the country? Yeah, we did. We set this weekend up on purpose for a, a great challenge for our team, and we knew you know it was going to be difficult. You bring in two teams that you know Idaho has picked to win their league by you know most publications in their league, and Lafayette's in the top two or three, and, and picked by some people to win. You know, going back to Friday, you know, we played a great 25 minutes, a really really good 25 minutes. We led 62-52 with with about 15 to go, and. You know, when the wheels kind of fell off, we, we stopped making shots and, you know, shots we normally make, you know, whether it was in the paint or it was threes, you know, we're making 12 threes a game at a high percentage. And, and I think we got a little tired. I think that we got a 10-point lead and could kind of feel that. And we, and when we stopped making shots, we it didn't let us get in our press, which was really bothering them. And, you know, it allowed them to get comfortable and get some confidence. And, yeah, I wasn't pleased with how we played. I thought we laid down, down the stretch. When things didn't go our way, I didn't think we handled adversity very well. And good teams handle adversity well. You know, throughout 40 minutes, you're going to face some type of adversity, and we, we didn't do a good job of that. Something we got to get better at. How do you challenge a team following a, a moment where you feel like this is a learning lesson, we're going to respond differently in the future? We did. We, did. we really challenged them the last couple of days. Um, you know, I think... I think the consensus, you know, around here sometimes is, you know, Lafayette comes here, you're not supposed to beat them. And, you know, the lead for 25 minutes, some people that compliment me on it was a good thing and, you know, whatever. That's, I mean, you just can't operate like that. And I told our guys that. I said, you know, I'm disappointed in our effort. It's it's not good enough, not what we're trying to do. And I said, the beauty of it is, is you get a chance to bounce back and play a, a really good opponent, almost as good probably in, in certain ways better than Lafayette. But... It's it's a great opportunity today for us to bounce back and get back out there on a quick turnaround and, and play a really good basketball team in Idaho. Richie Riley and the Colonels hosting Idaho tonight. Vandals are 4-2 and two on the season. They finished in third place in the Great Alaska Shootout. What we're learning through the first eight games of the season for you and your Colonels, teams cannot guard you man-to-man, -man. And, and that probably means we're going to see a ton of zone throughout the next couple months of the season. How will that shape your team? It is, yeah, I think. You know, Lafayette is a 95% man-to-man team, and, and we did a nice job against them. When they were playing man and zone, they stalled us out a little bit, and we didn't make shots we normally make, and, and we didn't do a great job attacking it. We do expect tonight to see a lot of zone from Idaho. They play probably 60-40, you know, zone. You know, so tonight we'll probably see a heavy dose of it. You know, they'll three-quarter court trap back to it. We need to do a good job taking care of the ball and, 
and flowing into our zone offense and being more aggressive than we were on Friday night. We've got to be aggressive, attacking gaps, getting into the paint. And we got to step up and make shots. I mean, when you when guys pack a zone in that tight, we've got to step up and make shots. And then when we're not making them, we got to do a good job on the offensive glass. I think that's a huge key tonight. We've got to do a good job rebounding the ball and getting second chance opportunities. We see three guys for Idaho that produce 47 of their 70-plus points they get per game. Vic Sanders leading the big sky in points per game. He's averaging 22 a night. How will matchups affect the way your defense has to try to slow down these big three? And, and in response, they're going to be guarding guys that are either bigger or faster than them. You have a traditional lineup in, in some respects, but really untraditional with how this starting lineup will force Idaho to make some changes. Yeah, Vic Sanders, first of all, is a pro to me. Like, I think he's a pro. I've seen a lot of guys coaching the ACC and all those other leagues. Like, I think he's a pro. He's one of the best. He's, he's the best offensive player we've played all year, and we've played the number three team in America. I mean, he is – he can score on all three levels. He really shoots it, shoots 50% from three, he makes three and a half all in the game, and – he is just a talented offensive player that knows what he's doing. So I told our guys, I said, if you fall asleep on this guy for one second, I mean, he can really score. I compared him to Kevin Martin. And, you know, our guys don't really know who that is necessarily, but that's that's who I think that he is. I've coached against Kevin Martin before, and he was at Western Carolina. And, you know, he's he's good. You know, and they, they do have a big three, and he kind of spearheads that. It's going to be a contrasting style game. They don't want to play a ton of possessions. You know, one of our goals as a team is to get up 75 shots every game, and nobody's done that to them all season long. Nobody's got up 75 shots. So it's kind of been a magic number for us. We can get to 75 shots. We feel like we have a heck of a chance to win the game. So we're going to try to get it going up and down. You know, and I'm sure the other guys will probably like it. All kids like to play up and down. I don't know if Coach Verlin will let them rip and run like we want to, but, you know, it, it is going to be – it's going to be a fun game to watch for the fans. I mean, there's a lot of star power out there, guys that can really score the ball, so it's it's going to be fun. Best of luck, Coach. Thanks, Brian. Richie Riley and the Colonels. You can watch them on ESPN1003.com. Idaho Nichols after this break on ESPN Radio New Orleans. He doesn't want to sleep like a baby. It's what everyone wants when traveling on business. When staying in Thibodeau, okay. you have friends at the Hampton Inn and Suites who will help you get a great night's sleep. Dive into cloud nine. Experience plush comforter, soft sheets, your choice of cushy pillows. Add complimentary high-speed internet, a complimentary hot breakfast, and your business day is just as refreshing. Staying at the Hamptons like staying with friends. Oh, you love okay. having you here. To book your stay, visit Hampton.com or call 985-446-0900. Hotard Coaches, first in safety, first in luxury. You know Hotard. You see us on the road and all around town. Luxurious interiors and the on-time dependability you trust. Serving the Gulf Coast and beyond for over 80 years and a proud <laughs> supporter of Nichols Athletics. Go with Hotard, first in safety, Some first in luxury. Log on to Hotard.com or call 1-800-356-6831 to book your charter today. Owned and operated in Thibodeau, Divinity Home Health Services provides skilled nursing, physical, occupational, and speech therapy, aids, and medical social workers. Their staff are seasoned health care professionals who have come together to provide their patients with an unparalleled quality of care in the comfort of their home. Divinity was recognized nationwide as a 2014 Top 500 Home Care Agency by Decision Health and National Research Corporations. Choose quality. Choose Divinity. Hello, this is Archie Manning. Did you know that Louisiana is ranked 48th in the U.S. for overall health? Well, Thibodeau Regional is leading the way for significant change with the building of the state-of-the-art wellness center. Pass it on. To keep you safely in the game, athletes of all ages will have access to innovative on-site training and education. Pass it on. There are a lot of reasons to get excited about the new wellness center. Be a part of it and pass it on. Proud to be the official sports medicine provider for Nichols Athletics. Back-to-back -back home games for the Colonels against two of the best in all of mid-major land, Idaho and UL, in quick succession for the Colonels. And this is a difficult test 
for Nichols men's basketball program that is trying to turn the corner. An opening 2018 win on the road at UT Rio Grande Valley. Victory against Presbyterian. Those are whack and Big South opponents that Nichols has both achieved victories over. You lose to number five Villanova, a 186 loss against Western Kentucky, a 105-80 defeat against UL, and now it is one of the best in all of mid-major land. What Don Berlin has done in his eight seasons in Moscow, really impressive program that was dormant before Don Verlin's arrival. Idaho was 26-95 and 95 in the four years prior to Coach Verlin changing the culture, changing the program. I Idaho has a long history of success with men's basketball. They've had Larry Eustace, Tim Floyd, Don Monson. They've all won a lot of games with this Vandal program. But they've fallen on hard times, difficult to stick around in a conference that was built on basketball. Big West, WAC. WAC gets destroyed, the old WAC. And it, it was into the big sky, a conference that – all of Idaho's athletic programs will know and love moving forward. Idaho just wrapped up their final season in the Sun Belt with their football program. They won yesterday at Georgia State. They are willingly moving back to the FCS level. They'll be in the big sky. And who knows? Maybe the Nichols football program in Idaho will get to meet someday down the road in the postseason. Both have some of the, the, the top FCS programs in the country. Idaho's football program won nine games two years ago at the FBS level. They certainly expect to win a lot of games in the big sky. From a basketball standpoint, you're looking at four top three finishes in the big sky under Coach Verlin. He is 70 and 38 in eight seasons with Idaho. And this is a, a program that had not won 20 games in two decades before he did it a couple years ago. They went 19 and 14 last season, preseason number one in the big sky. They lost to North Dakota in the semifinals of the conference tournament last season. Wouldn't that be something? Get a rematch against UND and maybe pull off a bit into the NCAA tournament this season. Colonels certainly hope that they have a date with destiny in the month of March. Nichols was preseason number 10 in the Southland. But they feel like they have one of the most talented teams in all of the conference, if not in the country at the mid-major level, the low-major level. Colonels trying to put it all together and come up with a signature non-conference win against Idaho. Tavon Sadler, Javon Powell, Roddy Peters, Kevin Johnson, and Kimani Jackson will get the start for the Colonels this evening. Idaho will turn to Perion Calendret, Brayon Blake, Victor Sanders, Nate Sherwood, and Jordan Scott. As you heard from Coach Riley in the pregame show, Vic Sanders is a pro. 22 points per game, gives you four rebounds, couple assists. He's been scoring a lot lately. Top scorer in the big sky, number one three-point shooter. Calendret is an athletic freak. You're trying to avoid being on the wrong end of a dunk from number one, Jordan Scott, complimentary piece, rebounder, pass out of the post, really good defender. Brayon Blake, top rebounder in the big sky. And Nate Sherwood, career year, 14 points, five rebounds, two assists per game. He'll jump against Kimani Jackson. Colonels in their home whites, nickels in red across the front of the jerseys, road black for the Idaho Vandals with that potato tan color logo that'll stretch across the front of the black jerseys. Idaho in gold for the Nike uniforms for the Vandals. Colonels open by winning the tip and promptly finding Javon Powell. He opens the game by sticking a straightaway three. Colonels nail the three to open the game against UL. Javon Powell, quick 3 nothing start for the Colonels. Full court, 1-2-2 two, two press for Nichols. A throw it over the top. Blake floats it from the right lane, leaves it long, and Boog Sadler has the rebound for Nichols. Colonels will push with Johnson. To Peter straight away, lob left block, Jackson catches, lays it home, and he's fouled. Blake and Sherwood were tardy. Sherwood tried to front the post. Kimani Jackson shooting 80% from the floor, and he has the Colonels on top, 5-0. to zero. Quick start for the Colonels. Back-to-back -back buckets in the opening 40 seconds of the game. And Kimani Jackson now coming to terms with his new role as a starter. He's still only playing about 12 minutes per game with all the foul issues. 
Kimani has made three straight starts, but he'll miss the free throw, and Jordan Scott takes control of the rebound for Idaho. They'll run, find Sanders, left corner three, it's short. Jackson fights for the board, loses it. Scott claims it at the free throw line, second rebound for Scott. And Calendrett will take over the offense for Idaho. He passes to Sanders for a left wing three, it's short. One arm rebound by Kimani Jackson and the Colonels. Nichols will cross court feed to Powell left dart. Top of the key pass goes to Peters. He slashes in, tries a floater, but it gets stripped out of bounds. Quick hands by Vic Sanders. Colonels will keep it with a clock at 21. 5 to 0 Nichols. Left baseline inbound approaching for Roddy Peters. Screen set at the left elbow. Curling is Powell, but catching at midcourt is Tavon Sadler. Transfer from UNC Greensboro. Gives it to Peters' right lane. He kicks it back to the left corner. Sadler goes baseline against Blake. Poor pass to the left sideline. is tipped away from Jackson. He gets it back with a clock at 8. Pass to Sadler, left corner. Baseline into Blake, and he steps out of bounds. Great defense by Brayon Blake. 6'7", 215-pounder from Seattle. Back in Louisiana for the first time in almost 10 years. Lived here as a kid. Inbound goes to Blake on the right sideline. Sanders will play behind the ball, and now he'll initiate the offense. Vic Sanders, a couple early looks in the game. He'll keep shooting, has yet to connect on one. Colonels leading 5-0 in a minute 40 in. Straightaway pass goes to the right arc. Sanders heads left, stripped by Kevin Johnson, and he comes up with the steal. Three on three, lead pass to Peters for a left-handed layup. Steal and an assist for Kevin Johnson. Peters with the field goal, 7-0 Nichols. Callendrick trapped on the inbound, slips it to midcourt. Sanders, great feed right corner for a Blake three, and it's in. Brayon Blake, 35% three-point shooter. First field goal of the night for Idaho, 7-3 to three Nichols. And here is the inevitable defensive look that the Colonels can expect tonight and for the rest of the season. 2-3 matchup zone from Idaho. Right-handed runner falls from just inside the free throw line by Ronnie Peters. He attacked the zone and comes up with his second straight field goal, 9-3 Nichols. Offensive potency, certainly not the problem for Nichols this season. They're averaging 94 points per game. They're still top six in the country. High post feed goes to Sherwood. One dribble right, cut off by Jackson. He forces the travel. And this is why Coach Riley has inserted Kamani Jackson into the starting lineup and allowed legend Roberton to embrace a reserve role. Kamani Jackson, 6'8", wiry, 230 pound frame. Colonel Ball with a six point lead. Midcourt left sideline, Roddy Peters. Keeps the ball in his right hand. Approaches Kevin Johnson, passes it right sideline, now back to Peters. Colonels, they'll find Sadler at the left elbow. Turn around from 15, misses everything. Right block rebound by Brayon Blake. He'll run the show and open up the offense by locating Perry on Calendret, senior from suburban Seattle. He'll go one-on-one -on -one against the freshman, Kevin Johnson. Man-to-man -man set for the Colonel defense. Quick pass right corner to Jordan Scott. Late on the pass to the right block, and Jackson bats it out of bounds. Kimani Jackson peeling across the paint. and He has played a vital part in this quick start for the Colonels. Right baseline inbound for Calendret. Screen the screeners. The inbound goes right corner to Blake. Clocks at nine. Back to the right corner. Quick move. Calendret, and that's what he does best. Hammer dunk, one-handed flush. Nine to five, Colonels. Parry on Calendret. He got a shout-out from Zach Levine after his dunk against Cal State Bakersfield. Two-time NBA slam dunk champ. Giving you some love. Left block post up for Jackson. Heads middle, tries a baby hook shot, leaves it off left. Blake has another rebound. Idaho ball. Calendret with that Russell Westbrook speed. He's up the floor but loses it from behind. Jackson with the steal. Credit Javon Powell for disrupting the flow of Calendret. Left lane crossover. Peters is to the bank, but he gets rejected at the rim by Vic Sanders. Out of bounds with 15.59 to play in the opening half. Great start for the Colonels. Explosive response by Idaho, but Nichols. Scored five points in the first 40 seconds. They have a 9-5 lead with 16 minutes to play in the opening half. Colonels 9, Vandals 5 on ESPN Radio New Orleans.
Nine to five, Nichols. Four minutes into our Sunday night non-conference matchup against Idaho. Vandals picked up a third place win against Cal Poly in the Great Alaskan Shootout. Final year of the Great Alaskan Shootout. 40 years of high major basketball in Anchorage. And Idaho went out with a nice win against Cal Poly. Also picked up a victory against Santa Clara. They're trailing by four as Lafayette Rutledge will make his debut. He'll slip the handoff high post to Kevin Johnson. He walks with it. Turnover Nichols. Rutledge, Johnson, Roberton, Powell, and Sadler for the Colonels. Vic Sanders, Nate Sherwood, Brayon Blake, Jordan Scott, and Perrion Calendret for Idaho. Sherwood will handle the inbound at midcourt. You've got to be a big man with some ball skills against this Colonel pressure. And at midcourt, Scott has it stripped. Kevin Johnson with the steal. Slips it back to Rutledge left arc. Scott approached quickly and prevented the pull-up three. But Scott will remain on Rutledge. Rutledge 5'10", Scott 6'6". Pass left corner, Johnson's all alone, shoots a three over Calendret, leaves it long, but Roberton grabbed the rebound, loses it late, stripped away by Sanders, and Scott will locate Vic Sanders after the ball landed in his lap. Four-point deficit for Idaho, their possession in the right front court. Sanders, free throw line extended to the right. Steps to the left, rip through move to the middle, Powell gambles, and Sanders wraps it around for a beautiful layup. Blake on the field goal, his second one of the evening, 9-7 Nichols. Roberton post up left block. Digging is Calendred, and Roberton can't go to work. Refeed to the point, and Rutledge against Scott with the clock at 15. He finds Powell, pull up three off the back rim. Powell can't get to the rebound. Vic Sanders has it, and he'll start a three-on-one fast break. Finger roll finishes in for Sanders. An elegant touch to conclude the transition bucket. We're tied at nine. First field goal of the evening for Vic Sanders. 29, 22, 24, 18, and 24 points in his last five games. Two picks to choose from for Powell. He goes to the right, spins it left corner. Johnson goes baseline. No one stops him. An easy score. Calendret gets burned, and the freshman from Thibodeau has his first field goal. 11 to 9, Nichols. 14 minutes to play in the opening half. Idaho's offense starting to get comfortable. Sanders at the right arc, bounce pass right corner. Blake's all alone, shoots to three and leaves it long. Roberton comes up with a left block rebound, and the Colonels will push. Richie Riley telling his team, get moving. Top of the key pass goes right arc to Rutledge. Strong side lob, right block goes to Roberton. He's fouled and scores it. Tough left-handed finish for legend Roberton. 13-9, Nichols, free throw for the senior. Experience everywhere you look for the Colonels. And this is why Coach Riley still feeling confident about his team heading into a critical stretch in December. Four and four start for Nichols, but it's players like Roberton. International background, growing up in London, was recruited by Coach Riley to play at Clemson, provided a support role for Brad Brownell's team during a, a two-year window in the ACC, transferred this offseason to Nichols. And after graduating from Clemson, immediately eligible, and he's still leading the Southland Conference in blocks. He'll make the free throw and provide a five-point cushion for the Colonels, 14-9 Nichols. Chad Sherwood steps in for the first time tonight for Idaho, picks up his dribble at the right arc. Peters pressuring as the pass goes to Blake, right sideline. Clock's under 15. Calendret looks over at Don Verlin. And the eighth-year head coach of Idaho tells his point guard, get going. Sherwood, right corner, slip pass, right block for a layup by Sanders. He curled the baseline, and no one stops him. Sherwood, a rare assist, 14 to 11, Nichols. 5-0 run concludes. Sherwood did have a career high in assists against Cal Poly, but had been only averaging about one per game. Pass left arc goes to Zaquavian Smith, but an offensive foul called in the paint against legend Roberton. Now, there's no need to knock on wood. Broadcast cannot influence the outcome of the game. But we just went six minutes, six minutes and 57 seconds without a foul. Let us savor this moment. Colonels picked up 24 fouls in their first 24 minutes of the opener against UT Rio Grande Valley. And that kind of set the tone for the season. Friday's game against UL. Do we even need to recap the free throw situation? Lafayette attempted 54 free throws in the game. 36 for 54 from the line. Colonels up three, 13 minutes to play in half number one. Calendret, right wing pass, high post to Scott. 
Tight area to work with. Jams it over to the left arc. And with the clock down to 12, a reach in on the floor on the Colonels. There was some chaos in the interior. Idaho will pack in the paint. They're turning to a larger lineup. Trying to get some size in the game as we welcome Ark McCrutchen for the first time tonight for Idaho. He's missed the last five games. Big body, talented forward. McCurchin being guarded by Tavon Sadler. Sherwood is free in the left wing, and he buries the 124th three-pointer of his career. Wide open, 14-14, five straight for Idaho. Roberton setting a high post pick for Roddy Peters, but then the pass gets forced into the middle. It's stolen by Sanders. He gives it up from behind. Sequavian Smith with a takeaway. He gets tangled in the right block and turns it over. Sequavian stunned that a foul wasn't called on the kick by Sanders, but he went into the paint out of control, loses possession, and Idaho will take over with 12-12 on the clock in half number one. Kimani Jackson re-enters for the Colonels. Legend Roberton will exit. Colonels have had a pair of 5-0 bursts in this opening eight-minute frame. But Idaho has responded in, in both occurrences, and they've got this game tied up at 14. Jordan Scott in the backcourt, picks his dribble up, promptly double-teamed, fights through and slips it to Sherwood right sideline. Cross-court to Trayvon Allen, who almost walked. He gets into the paint, finds a wide-open shooter, but McCurchin misses it right short corner. 15-footer no good, and Peters has the rebound for Nichols. To Sadler, Rydart, quick crossover, step back, but great defense from Jordan Scott. That forces a pass to Smith, whose right wing three is short, and Allen has the rebound for Idaho. Trayvon Allen works it around the horn, sideline right to Sherwood. Down screen to free Sanders for a top of the key three, and he splashes it home. First three of the night for Victor Sanders. He made 20 in his previous five games. Vandals have a 17-14 lead. They're on an 8-0 run. Jump stop to the left block for Peters, and he's fouled on the floor by Vic Sanders. First foul of the game on Sanders. Media timeout number two with 11.22 left in half number one. Eight straight for the Vandals. They lead it 17-14 to 14 on ESPN Radio New Orleans. Colonels have forced five turnovers in the opening eight and a half minutes. But Idaho has 12 points between Vic Sanders and Brayon Blake. Vandals lead at 17 to 14 with 11.22 to play in the opening half. Sanders lulls you to sleep, and then all of a sudden he has 25 points. He's been averaging 22 a game, but he went off in the great Alaskan shootout. 18 points has been his minimum this season, at least 18 in five straight games. Colonels will try to lock him up on defense, but first things first, Nichols needs a field goal, but Javon Powell throws it away in the right corner, and this is what Jordan Scott does. He's the X factor for this Vandal team. Take away in the paint. It's Allen, Scott, Sanders, and a couple newbies for Idaho. Nate Sherwood is back in with his brother, Chad. Scott catches left block, goes to work against Sadler. Up and under, but staying grounded is Sadler. And Scott has to get rid of it back to the point. Allen has five seconds on the clock. Swings it right corner to Sanders. He finds Sherwood at the free throw line. Fade away from 15 is off right. And a big board by Kamani Jackson. Colonel Ball with 10.40 to play in the opening half. Sadler left corner. Attacks Scott, who stays on his feet. Won't allow the shot. And it's back to Peters at the free throw line. Step through floater by Peters. Awkward angle, but he still makes it. Everything he does results in 
positive plays. Six points for Peters. Colonels are within one. 17 to 16, Idaho. Sanders, a furious trap applied by Powell and Johnson, but he gets out of it in the left corner. Into the half court set. It's a right block post up for Scott. Quick baseline turn against Jackson, but the wraparound left-handed layup is long. Peters with the rebound. Colonels can take the lead. Peters goes into Sherwood for an easy offensive foul call. And Chad Sherwood, he's been a glue guy for Idaho for four seasons, anticipated the move, and Peters has his first foul of the game. With the return of Ark McCrutchen, Idaho certainly has some depth that had been lacking the last five games. Allen, Sherwood, McCurchin, they're your big three off the bench. Sherwood breaks the pressure, jump stops to the right block, but an awkward shot is banked long. He gets his own rebound and scores it from the middle of the paint. 19-16 Vandals. Colonel's already into the half-court set where they'll see a 2-3 zone from Idaho. Chad Sherwood, Trayvon Allen, they're up top. Center of the circle, Peters passes to the left wing where a three by Powell barely hits the rim, but tracking down the left corner rebound, Kimani Jackson. New shot clock for the Colonels. They trail by three, 9.30 to play in the opening half. You don't have a lot of rim protectors in there for Idaho, but the Colonels cannot get into the paint. Sadler tries to change that, reaches the right elbow and floats it home from 13. Soft touch from Tavon Sadler. His first field goal of the night has the Colonels within one. Davon had a career-high 20 points against UL on Friday. It's 19-18, Idaho. Allen anticipating and feeling the trap. He spins out of it and keeps his dribble. Has the white Nikes on with the gold swoosh. Johnson will play off, and Allen passes to the left wing where Sanders wanted to shoot. Instead, he gives it to Allen, who pulls the trigger on a right wing three. It rims out, and a foul is called on the floor against the Colonels. Powell could not box out Blake. Brayon Blake playing like a cornerback in the inside, which is fitting since he has his brother in attendance tonight. Not brother by blood, but somebody who Colonel football fans know well. Daryl Adams, who would have had an all-conference season in the Southland before an injury the last three games. He grew up outside of Baton Rouge with Brayon. Tough night for Daryl Adams. He's in the crowd, certainly wants to see the Colonels win, but he wants to see Blake do well. And off of the possession that was... Extended by Blake, Calendrit catches in the right wing, rises up and drills a three. Idaho has a 22 to 18 lead. Credit Blake for keeping that play alive. Colonel possession at the left arc. Hard move middle by Peters, floats it from 13. It's long, right block rebound by Blake and he outlets to midcourt. Here comes Calendrit, cut off by Peters. Move to the left, now a swing pass right corner. Garrett Kingsman just came in. He'll pass to the top of the key where Blake backs down Kimani, fades from 12 feet, misses it, but Sherwood comes up with a rebound and scores. Right-handed finish off the backboard. Six-point lead for the Vandals, their largest of the half. Colonels trailing 24-18 with eight minutes to play in the opening frame. Stagnant look for the Colonel offense against this zone. They'll try to change that by finding Sadler left elbow. Backs away to the arc. Now finds Powell for a left wing three. Wide open, but the shot's long. Allen has the rebound at the free throw line. Ready for the trap, and he still loses it. Powell with the steal. Out to Johnson. Deep left wing two is off the back rim. Right short corner rebound for Calendret. Outlets into the left corner where Blake resists the urge to take the three. Six-point advantage for the Vandals, and Blake clearing out to create some space for his point guard. Parry on Calendret. 6'2", 180-pounder, puts it behind his back. Hard move to the middle, but it's taken away. Stripped, steal by Kamani Jackson. Colonels d up in the paint. Now they'll allow Roddy Peters some room to run as he breaks to the bucket. Left-handed layup, it falls home. Eight points for Roddy Peters. hard nose finish, 24-20 Vandals. Idaho wastes no time. They'll run to blank. Step through, Euro hop, and the bunny finish, 26-20. Blake in the paint, six-point Vandal lead. Seven points for Brayon Blake. He averages just over nine points per game. Sadler tries to answer. Pull up left wing three, in and out. Right block rebound by Blake, and he could have a double-double in the first half. Seven points, five rebounds already, and he'll pull up for a 17-footer from the left lane and drill it. And all Dale Adams can do sitting amongst the Colonel football fans is shake his head. He's seen that game for the last 10 years. 28-20, Vandals on top. 
Peter straight away, lob left lane. Give from Jackson to Sadler for his right block rim run, but he gets bumped, fouled, and he'll have free throws when we return to Thibodeau. It's 28-20, to Idaho with the lead. Colonels had an early five-point advantage. Rayon Blake, they have come back with a vengeance, and one of the nastiest dunks you will see on a Sunday night throughout Division I basketball. It was offered by Perion Calendret, the Idaho point guard. Colonels are forcing turnovers. There's already seven recorded by Idaho, but converting on the offensive end, something that Nichols is still struggling, and this is what we have seen all year against Idaho's defense. They're only allowing 66 points per game. Colonels are one for seven from beyond the arc, and they trail 28 to 20 with six minutes and some chains left in half number one from Stouffer Gym. This is Colonel Basketball on ESPN Radio New Orleans. Twenty-eight to twenty, Idaho with an early eight-point lead. Six minutes, seventeen seconds left in half number one, and free throws for Tavon Sadler, six-six, two hundred and fifteen-pound senior from Aberdeen, Maryland, and he will swish his first free throw attempt. Another all-around performance on Friday night for Tavon. Twenty points, six rebounds. Did foul out for the second time in the last three games and the third time this season, but he had. A multi-steal performance for his sixth straight game. He's top five in the Southland in steals, and he will convert on both free throw attempts. It's 28 to 22 Idaho. Full court man-to-man -man pressure on the inbound. Left sideline Blake, quick lead ahead to Kingman, attacks two defenders and gets the reach in from behind on Javon Powell. Garrett Kingman, one point per game, and he looked like an all-conference guard with the way he committed himself to Attacking the hoop, drawing the foul, he'll get free throws. And with 6-12 to play in the first half, Richie Riley will send Raji Lyons into the game. Another indication that the true freshman from just outside of New Orleans has curried some favor with this Colonel coaching staff. His role is expanding game by game, half by half. Kingman will make his first free throw attempt, only his second made free throw in three attempts this season. 29-22 Idaho. One more for the freshman from Gig Harbor, Washington. And Kingman goes two for two. Vandals back on top by eight. Powell, Sadler, Johnson, Lyons, and Zaquavian Smith against the 1-2-2 full quarter court pressure from the Idaho Vandals. Colonels get it to the free throw line where Johnson passes to the right block, but Lyons can't convert, and the ball's batted out of bounds off of Idaho. It's more of a three-quarter court pressure, but when you have Perion Calendret, he can go baseline to baseline. Calendret picked up Powell on the inbound and then dropped back into that three-quarter court pressure. Colonel's looking to score on the half-court set. Lions goes back door, but the right block layup contested and blocked by Kingman, but he picks up the foul. Free throws for Tavon Sadler on successive possessions. And this is the secret skill that Raji Lyons is revealing game by game. He is the only post player for the Colonel's comfortable at operating from 15 to 20 feet. He can catch, he can play back to the basket, or he can face you, and all facets of his game revolve around the pass. Great look to Sadler, and he'll knock down the first free throw attempt. Three straight makes from the line for Sadler, 30 to 23 Idaho. Three dribbles for Tavon, bends the knees, releases above the head, and swishes it. Four straight makes. Came in struggling from the free throw line. He was nine of his last 16. 
But he makes his first four tonight. Colonels trail by six. Full court pressure continues. Vic Sanders, he'll take control of the offense for Idaho. Has three seconds to cross. Left sideline, picks his dribble up, and with a second to spare, he gets it across. And then has the ball kicked as he penetrated inside the three-point line. Don Verlin setting the signals from the sideline for Idaho. And he'll ask Perry on Calendret to inbound from the right baseline. Calendret averaging just under 17 points per game the last four for Idaho. Has five points in the first 15 minutes. He has the ball in the right arc against Sadler. Shakes to the left, keeps the low dribble. Chest pass to Sanders for a contested three that's short off the right of the rim, but rebounded by Kingman. Back out to the point. Calendra wide open for three. It's off right, and Lyons gets the rebound. He's fouled by Kingman. 30 to 24 Vandals. Raji Lyons won't get credit for an assist on the pass that set up the two made free throws by Sadler. But his ability to operate out of the high post gave the Colonels two points on the last possession. Nice rebound off a wide open miss by Calendret. This is a 41% three point shooter. Colonel's fortunate that he couldn't take advantage of the open look. Three quarter court pressure from Idaho. Colonel's going right to left, mid court with Powell. Stays on the left sideline and gives it to Book Sadler. Versatile small forward for the Colonels. He's playing in the post against this zone. Powell at the point, has missed his last two threes after sinking one to open the game. He'll drive to the left, good feed to Lyons. He scores, but a travel before the finish, and it looked like a clean catch and release. Shuffling the feet was Lyons. Tough turnover for Nichols. Colonel coaching staff led by John Akins, Austin Klon, Jamora Morgan, and Tyler Parker all standing up in unison and telling Raji, that's a great play. Even when you turn it over, you can't lose confidence. Freshman playing the most that he has been able to see on the floor this season in the last two games, and this is against UL and Idaho. Midcourt Blake, no one stops in Brayon Blake. Right-handed Flint finish away from contact. He is dominating in the first 15 minutes, and the Vandals have an eight-point lead. Powell straight away passes to the left arc where Sadler keeps it at his hip. Heads to the left, stops in the lane, and gets bumped before he can attempt a shot. And Nichols will have free throws for the final four and a half minutes. They're in the bonus down by eight. Bray on Blake doing the lion's share of the scoring for Idaho. His career high is 17 points, and he has 11 in the first 15 minutes of this game. Second foul called on Jordan Scott, and Sadler will look to make his fifth straight free throw in all in the last two minutes. Tavon, success continues. He's up to seven points in the game. He hits the first free throw, 32 to 25, Idaho. Tavon has shot at least 10 free throws in two of the last four games. And he still says that he has yet to reach his full potential. He's not happy with his field goal percentage and three-point percentage. But 16 points, seven rebounds, Three assists per game for Sadler, and he'll make both free throws. Colonels are within six as the inbound goes to midcourt to Bray on Blake for Idaho. Vandal ball at midcourt. Perry on Calendra. Dribble to the right, now pass right corner to Scott. Whips the pass to the right block, and Kingman scores it. He fights past two defenders. Four points for Kingman, 34 to 26 Vandals. Sadler trying to respond. Inside the paint, fades from 12 feet and kisses at home. Tavon Sadler, eight points in the last four minutes. 34 to 28, Idaho, and walking into a trap in the corner. Perry on Calendret, fortunate to draw a reach in before he gave possession back to Nichols. Media timeout with 3.58 to play in the opening half. Colonels keeping it interesting. Idaho has 11 points from Brayon Blake, seven from Vic Sanders, but Tavon Sadler and Roddy Peters coming alive for the Colonels. Those two teaming up as they have all season, put the ball in the basket. 18 points between Sadler and Peters on six of 10 shooting. Sadler six of six from the line. Colonels trail by six with the under four minute media timeout. This is Nichols Basketball on ESPN Radio New Orleans.
Colonels looking for some support scoring to help out Tavon Sadler and Roddy Peters. 18 points between Sadler and Peters, but only four field goals spread among four other players. Deep left corner inbound for Idaho. Sanders wanted to air it out and launch the ball long. He still will. Pump fake, now throws it to midcourt. Left sideline, Blake. Double team arrives promptly. Quick pass left corner. Sanders backing into the post. Runs into Zaquavian. Smithy gets tripped up and drew the foul. Complicated sequence for Sanders. Had to back in Quay from 20 feet out, then lost his footing. Play was about to result in a turnover, but the whistle was administered against Nichols, and they will not say that Sanders was in the act of shooting. Team foul number six on the Colonels. Baseline inbound for Idaho. Sanders, Scott, Calendret. They're on the floor along with McCurchin. And with Perry on Calendret inbounding to Brayon Blake, who makes up the fifth on the floor for Idaho. It's Calendret catching left wing. His entry pass to the block, batted out of bounds. Quick hands by Sadler. 14 on the clock with Powell, Jackson, Johnson, Tavon Sadler, and Zaquavian Smith in the game for the Colonels. Change for Idaho, Chad Sherwood. He'll replace Jordan Scott. And these are the subtle moves that you have to tip your cap to a coach. Shot clock's approaching a critical stretch. Get your best shooter into the game. Sure little space to the corner, but the inbound picked off by Tavon Sadler. Took it away from Blake. Pushes to the left wing where Johnson goes cross court. It's Aquavian Smith, right baseline drive. Cut off by two defenders. Somehow finds Sadler for the layup. Great assist by Zaquavian Smith. And Sadler up to 12 points in the game, 34 to 30 Idaho. Immediate pressure in the backcourt. Idaho slings it up the floor to the right sideline. Sherwood backs away from the pressure. And they'll reset, initiate their offense. Try to find a good look for Sanders. He has to clear out the catch on the right lane. Challenges Johnson. Bounces it to the left block. Great defense from Jackson. He takes away the angle. McCurchin misses off the backboard. And the Colonels can push. They find Smith. Pull up left wing three. In and out. Left block rebound. Brayon Blake. Idaho, they waste no time. Calendret had a layup. But an offensive foul goes against Ark McCrutchen. Turnover, Idaho with 2.54 to play in the half. This also gives some credit to Zaquavian Smith on the assist on the previous possession. His third of the year. He has one assist in the last three games after opening the season without one in his first 70 minutes. But Zaquavian was putting up a lot of points to start the year. Had 25 in 25 minutes against Villanova. Hit his first... Six threes, six of his first seven threes. Now trying to become more of a playmaker. He's in the left wing with Sadler at the point. Over to Johnson for a left wing three. Shoots it short. It's off the right rim. Bray on Blake. Rebound number eight. 234 to play in the half. Idaho up four. Blake, high post drive to the right of the rim. He palms the ball high. Misses it off the backboard. Kimani Jackson with the rebound. The Colonels push. Sadler. Keeps a hip-high dribble as he cuts to the left. Great crossover into the paint where he's fouled from behind. And there's no way Scott Blakeney can match up one-on-one -on -one against Tavon Sadler. Tavon putting up some real estate at the free throw line in the first half. Colonels were down eight when Sadler first reached the free throw line. He's made six in a row. Four dribbles this time for Sadler. Shrugs his shoulders. Knees bent. Quick release, and he swishes it. 34-31 Idaho. Great first half between a premier program out of the big sky and a colonel club that feels like they are an emerging power in the Southland. Tavon finally misses. Long rebound. Free throw line snagged by Vic Sanders. Idaho ball, but Sanders runs into a midcourt trap. Ball is on the ground. Blakely has it, and a timeout is called by Idaho. Sunday night basketball at its finest. Kevin Johnson, Tavon Sadler, Zaquavian Smith, all are on the floor, and Lars Curry, the Colonel's manager, he's out there trying to squeegee the sweat up. We've got about a 20-foot area that Lars will have to work on. You have to control the atmosphere in games like tonight. 
we packed Stouffer Gym on Friday for the UL and Nichols matchup. But Sunday night, Saints are playing. You understand that you won't have that type of crowd. Brayon Blake was talking before the game. He's got about 12 members of his family here, his grandma and several cousins. They still live outside of Baton Rouge. Does not matter how many people are in the gym. He said, you know what, we'll take care of the atmosphere. And you've got a Colonel team that's played in front of 12,000 fans and Wells Fargo Arena. Went to downtown Philly and played Villanova. And there will be plenty of people that will be in attendance for Colonel basketball games in Stouffer once we run into some conference opponents. But Nichols doing a great job upping the energy, and they're within three. Final two minutes of the half. And how many times this season have the final two minutes and the first two minutes of a half really directed the outcome, dictated how a game is played out? Important two minutes here for both programs with Chad Sherwood inbounding just to the left of Colonel Coach Richie Riley. Collision at midcourt and a tip inbound between Sanders to Sherwood improvising. Idaho just gets it in. They've got the clock at 15 as Blake fires up a left wing three. It's short, but he gets his own rebound at the three-point line, and then Sadler reaches in for the foul. One and one for Brayon Blake. He is a tough matchup. Plays in the post, but they've expanded his role this season because he's shooting 35% from beyond the arc, and we've seen a lot of Blake from the outside. If he was an interior member of this offense and was crashing on offensive rebounds, he might lead the country in rebounds. He's ninth in Division I in rebounding, but he's first in the Sun Belt in defensive rebounding. And he'll make the free throw. Vandals are on top by four. What a first half for Brayon Blake. 12 points, seven rebounds. It's five of ten from the floor. And Blake... This is the second, Zaquavian Smith. He beats three other Colonels to the ball and comes up with the rebound, but then Javon Powell walks with it in the backcourt. And this is the disruption that is Perry on Calendret. Calendret strung along Powell, gave him some confidence that he was going to open up the left side of the floor and let Powell take it, but then Javon elected to try to make that yo-yo pass to the right sideline, and Calendret was ready to show you a viper strike. Came right back at Powell. Wasn't ready for that move. Turns it over. Calendar at pull up right wing three. Leaves it short. Sadler can't get the rebound. It lands in the lap of Blake. A freebie and a new shot clock for Idaho. Down screens coming for shooters who are curling to the right and the left wing. It's Sherwood and Sanders receiving the screens. Sanders catches right arc against Powell. Weak side lob, right block. It's Blake against Smith. He runs over Smith and picks up the offensive foul. First foul of the nine on Brayon Blake. Zaquavian Smith, gutty performance so far. Zaquavian is six foot 170 pounds. Brayon is 6'7", 215. Anticipation just like we saw from Chad Sherwood when he took the charge on Roddy Peters. Doesn't matter how much bigger the ball handler is, just beat him to the spot. Calendret tormenting the Colonels in the backcourt. He tips the ball, almost came up with a steal. Instead, it's to Sadler, who had possession and then draws the reach in. Brayon Blake, back-to-back -back fouls. Check that, Chad Sherwood. Blake and Sherwood both in the neighborhood. The result is free throws for Nichols. And the last two possessions have been challenging, to say the least, for Nichols. Idaho has extended their 1-2-2-3 two, two, quarter court pressure, and Calendrick created a steal on the previous possession. Pass from Smith to Powell was tipped and almost taken away. But Sadler improvises, draws another foul, and he is 8 for 9 from the free throw line. He makes the first. 35 to 32 Vandals. Kayvon Sadler turning into the player that I think everybody at Nichols knew he could be when he transferred here from UNCG last year. Southern Conference Rookie of the Year in 2014-2015. And he is making the most out of his opportunity this season, but he misses the second free throw. And the Vandals have possession with a three-point lead and 60 seconds on the clock. 
Chad Sherwood, deep left corner. Quick touch to the left block. Blake palms it, turns. Hook shot from seven feet is in. No doubt about it. He took on Sadler and produces the 36 and 37th point of the evening for Idaho. They're up five. 14 first half points for Blake. 17 points is his career high. And he's knocking on that door in the first 20 minutes. Backdoor lob against the 2-3 zone, and Powell throws it away. Sequavian Smith was the intended target, and he was eye level with the rim, but the pass was behind him. Worked as a two-for-one in favor of the Colonels, but they do not get the points they were seeking. Seven-second differential game clock, shot clock. 37-32 Vandals, and this is the kind of game that Idaho wanted to play. Keep it in the 60s and 70s is how they wanted to project it. Colonels have been without the services of Roddy Peters for the last few minutes since the charge that Chad Sherwood took. And that's the challenge when you pick up a couple early fouls. You have no option but to protect your best players. Tavon Sadler wiping his hands in front of the Colonel bench and getting a couple quick words of advice from the assistant coaching staff before he re-enters for the final 37 seconds. We've got a clock malfunction we're trying to take care of before we resume play and put the finishing touches on this first half. Sadler, Jackson, Powell, Johnson, and Smith are in the game for Nichols. Chad Sherwood, he'll inbound underneath the hoop to Vic Sanders, and he's ready to roll. Across midcourt, somebody needs to stop Sanders. He attacks two players, scores, and draws the foul. Jackson and Sadler, split second too slow. And we've said it throughout the night. You hate to look up at the scoreboard and see Vic Sanders with only seven points. Now he's up to nine. You're down seven. You contain Sanders. And now he'll attempt a free throw to make this an eight-point game. They were waiting with bated breath this summer in Moscow. Vic worked out with a bunch of NBA teams, didn't hire an agent, bypassed the draft, and returned for his senior season. But as Coach Riley said in the pregame show, he is a pro. Doesn't matter if it's the G League next year or maybe overseas. At some point, you'll see him in the NBA. And Sanders makes the free throw. Eight-point lead for the Vandals, 31 seconds to play in the first half. Timeout Nichols as they prepare for the final possession and you really need to go into halftime down by two possessions. Eight-point deficit would be challenging since that is the largest lead we have seen from Idaho in the opening frame. And unfortunately for the Colonels, this is how a number of games have played out, put up a really good fight in the first 17, 18 minutes, and just lose your way in the final couple minutes, and all of a sudden a close competitive game doesn't feel nearly as close and competitive when you look up at the score at the half. Colonels had a four-point lead against UL on Friday. They led 62-52 with under 16 minutes to play before Lafayette went on a crazy run and took control of the game. Colonels are 10 for 16 on two-point field goals in the first half. But finding clean looks from beyond the arc and making them, it just hasn't happened. Nichols hit a three on their opening possession of the game with Javon Powell. They are 0 for their last eight. And with 30 seconds to play in the first half, three-quarter court pressure being applied by Don Verlin and the Vandals. Smith, Johnson, Sadler, Jackson, and Javon Powell for the final possession of the opening half for Nichols. With Chad Sherwood and Trayvon Allen playing up top in this 2-3 zone. Powell with the clock at 9. He's ready to act. Starts on the left wing. Pinch post feed to Sadler, turn around, baby hook is in. Great pass by Powell. Sadler scores it, and that is how the first half will end. Tavon Sadler, 16 points in the first half. Idaho has a 40 to 34 lead, but a great conclusion to the opening 20 minutes for Nichols. And Tavon Sadler, what an opening frame for him. Scored a career high 20 on Friday, backs it up with 16 points in the first half tonight. He was eight for 10 from the free throw line. And for the seventh straight game, Tavon Sadler has at least two steals on the night. Another multi-steal performance for him. He's got two in the first half. Forcing turnovers, not the issue for Nichols, but the Colonels had a tough time breaking the press of Idaho. Ten turnovers in the first half for Nichols, ten for Idaho. Colonels in it. They're down by two possessions. 
with halftime arriving at Stouffer Gym. It's Idaho 40, Nichols 34. Your Sports Medicine Center of Thibodeau Regional Halftime Show awaits you next on ESPN Radio New Orleans. Forty to thirty-four, Vandals enjoying a six-point lead in Thibodeau tonight. Idaho doing their best to slow down one of the top offenses in the country, and you have to credit Don Verlin and this Vandal defense as good as advertised. They held Santa Clara to fifty-nine points in the opening round of the Great Alaskan Shootout. Cal Poly had sixty-six. Bakersfield had sixty-four. They beat Sam Houston earlier this season in Moscow. And Sam Houston picked up a victory last year against Idaho and Huntsville. Bearcats only scored 54 points in their nine-point loss. And it is an arena, Memorial Gym, an arena in, in northwestern Idaho that the Colonels need to get accustomed with, familiarize themselves with. Home and home with Idaho this year in Thibodeau. Next season, Nichols will make the trip, fly into Spokane, and cruise southeast into Moscow and match up with one of the best teams in the Big Sky Conference. Richie Riley, by design, wanted to set this weekend up where you play one of the top teams in the Sun Belt at home on Friday, then welcome Idaho on Sunday. Colonels played at UL last year, and obviously they'll play at Idaho next season. But this is the most difficult non-conference home stretch in really 20 plus years in Nichols basketball history. To even bring one Division I team into Thibodeau, it's a challenge. This is your money making period if you're an athletic department the size of, of Nichols. If you're in the Southland Conference, if you are in a, a smaller D1 conference in this country, which really out of the 32 conferences that exist, 
more and more of us, if, if you're not a part of the Power Five and you're not getting those million-dollar checks at the end of each season, you have to be so strategic with where you're playing your games in November and December. Keep your team fresh. They have to be ready for conference. Don't get them beaten down, but, hey, you have to make this much money. Richie Riley had to play last year's schedule. He inherited it. Did not want to go through that kind of grind again. When you're playing Florida State, an ACC team opened the year at Boston College, which, of course, the Colonels came away with a win in. Opened the year with that victory against BC, but then you got to go at Florida State. You're playing at Texas Tech. Have a tournament in San Diego. Then you're playing at New Mexico State, and nobody wins in Las Cruces. You have a Thanksgiving bus trip to Birmingham to play a tournament at Sanford University. Over it. Richie Riley, after dealing with last year's schedule, said we just have to do a better job being strategic with our non-conference schedule. We'll play our money games. We'll bring in that necessary revenue. But if we can find a way to play some home-and-homes and get some D1 teams to come to Thibodeau, our team will be refreshed and prepared for their stretch run. And it's worked out well. Competitive game against UL before he ended up losing and, and what turned into a lopsided loss. Final score did not reveal how close that game was until UL went on their 21-0 run. You play Idaho tonight, and now you focus on finals. You get 12 days before your next game. And it actually works out well for both the Colonel men and women's basketball team. They'll both have a week and a half off before resuming play. Colonel Women's Basketball, they'll take on Baylor. When they get back at it, they, they play Mississippi Valley State on a road game on December 15th, but then they'll play at home against a team that could be number one in the country by the time they play here in Thibodeau on December 18th. Colonel Women blew out Jackson State last night, and they are putting up points right now. They've won three straight games. They've gone 72, 83, and 90, beat Jackson State 90 to 64 last night. Tyreka Williams had 16 points. Tia Charles had 14. Marina Lilly had 13. Cassidy Berrios had 12 points, 7 rebounds, 7 assists, 5 steals, 2 blocks. Destiny Collins had 13. Dewey Plaisance has a fun team in Thibodeau this season. But it's nice that both the Colonel women and Colonel men will have a couple days to rest and refresh before they get ready for conference play that opens for the men on December 28th. The Colonels will play at home against Northwestern State right before New Year's Eve. They, of course, have to finish up their non-conference schedule. They've got a couple big ones left. You play at Tulane in New Orleans. You'll play at Seattle University. Play in the Emerald City two days before Christmas in an afternoon game, a Sunday afternoon game in a couple weeks. A lot to like for the Colonels as they prepare for a big stretch and then inevitably you turn your attention to Southland Conference basketball where the Colonels were picked to finish 10th this season, something that they certainly are well aware of. Picked to finish 14th last year, and they tied for 8th. Nichols hoping to make some noise once conference play arrives. Halftime from Thibodeau tonight. It's your Sports Medicine Center of Thibodeau Regional Halftime Show. Idaho 40, Nichols 34. We'll take a look inside the first half when we return to Thibodeau after this break on ESPN Radio New Orleans. As a leader in sanitation,
This is your Sports Medicine Center of Thibodeau Regional Halftime Show. We're at Stouffer Gymnasium, South Louisiana, on a Sunday night. And the Colonels trail Idaho 40-34. to It's an anniversary year for Idaho. 100 years ago, the term vandals was coined by local sports writers. They were describing the greatness of Heck Edmondson's Idaho basketball team, and they describe the defense and the intensity that was played in a manner that vandalized their opponents. By 1917, Henry Lloyd Jazz McCarty, he was a writer for a student newspaper, and he, he just included that nickname in the pregame write-up before one of Idaho's games. And here we are, 100 years later. It's the Idaho Vandals, and they are preparing for half number two against the Nichols Colonels team that – was able to get out to an early 5-0 lead, scored the first five points, also had a 14-9 lead, but Idaho went to their zone, slowed the game down, still shot the ball with great efficiency on offense, and the Vandals are enjoying the comforts of a six-point advantage. They were led by Brayon Blake, 14 points, nine rebounds in the first half. He scored six of the first eight points against Cal Poly, and last week's third place win in the Great Alaskan Shootout, but then he had a lower leg injury, left the game, came back, only finished with 10 points, making the most of his opportunity in the first few minutes tonight against Nichols, and that's allowed Vic Sanders to sit back, take his time scoring. He scored 10 points. Vandals are shooting 50% from the floor, and they're out-rebounding Nichols by eight, but the Colonels came alive in the last few possessions because of Tavon Sadler. 16 points, couple steals, 8 of 10 from the free throw line for Tavon. 8 points in 11 minutes for Roddy Peters. He was 4 for 6 from the floor. You get 8 of 12 shooting from your top two scores, but everybody else, they struggled. 4 for 14 for the rest of the Colonels. Javon Powell had a 3 to open the game, but he missed his next 3. Kevin Johnson was 1 for 4. He also missed a couple of 3s. Lafayette Rutledge, that is the name that we will – most mention in the second half of this game is going well for the Colonels. He came into this weekend second in the country and made three-point shots. Only hit one against UL on Friday. And Lafayette did not attempt a shot in the first half. And it's funny when you talk to opposing teams, sports broadcasters, their sports information department, or, or even opposing players, Brayon Blake, uh, we were able to catch up with him a few minutes before the game. College basketball, more than any other collegiate sport, has perfected the art of scouting. Synergy Services, and I don't even know how much this company is worth, but they, they should be worth billions considering what they have done to this game. You can isolate every play, every single play in a college basketball game from a shot, turnover, baseline inbounds, sideline inbounds. You can go and observe all of those moments and Brayon Blake was talking about Lafayette Rutledge tonight and he said well we're well aware that this dude can shoot it from anywhere and we're going to treat that half court stripe like that's his line which is not hyperbole if Lafayette Rutledge has the ball inside half court that is his zone he hit 10 three-pointers the day after Thanksgiving against the University of Maryland Baltimore County has only been able to hit one in the last two games and that's what happens when defenses are told over and over by a coach, do not let this player beat you. Second half has arrived. 40 to 34, Idaho. Calendret, Sanders, Scott Sherwood, and Bray on Blake. They'll get the nod for Idaho, but Blake throws it away on the first possession. One on two for Powell. No one stops him, and he scoops and scores with a right-handed layup. 40 to 36, Idaho. Javon Powell, just what he and the Colonels needed. 11th. Forced turnover by Nichols. And here comes the full court pressure. It's Kamani Jackson, Roddy Peters, Javon Powell, Kevin Johnson, and Tavon Sadler for Nichols. Inbound right corner to Perion Calendret, senior from suburban Seattle. He and Javon Powell going toe to toe. Powell forces the pass right sideline to Brayon Blake. High pick set by Sherwood. Powell fights over the top. Pass goes left wing to Scott. Not a threat to shoot from deep outside the three-point line, and he has to get rid of it to Sanders at the top of the key. Clock at six. Scott catches right elbow. 
Ball stripped away, gets it back, passes to the left corner for a Calendrick three, he leaves it wide left, and Peters has the left lane rebound for Nichols. He'll spark the transition game. Powell bounce pass to the right block. Jackson goes to work and overpowers Sherwood for the layup. He banks it home and give credit to Powell. Scores the first bucket of the second half, contributes with an assist in the second. Colonels, they're within two. Idaho looking for a quick response. Blake's out of control in the paint. He floats the shot long, but Javon Powell, he wraps up Sherwood and gets called for the hold. Foul on the Colonels with 18.47 to play in the second half. Nichols scoring the first four points in the opening minute 13. Left baseline inbound from Perrion Calendret. To Sherwood, center circle. They whip the pass right short corner. Great move by Blake, but it's blocked from behind. Roddy Peters, Colonel point guard with the stuff. Sadler comes up with it, and the Colonels will hit a trailing pal for a left wing three that's short. Saved by Blake, but he goes out of bounds, and the Colonels will have possession. Effort has intensified for Nichols in the opening 90 seconds of the second half, and Richie Riley applauding on the Colonel sideline encouraging stretch of success in the opening 90 seconds for Nichols. They'll look to tire, take the lead on this possession. Powell catches right wing, sidesteps two defenders, and he scores with ease. Second field goal of the second half for Powell. He's contributed on all three second half field goals. We are tied at 40. Sherwood, a midcourt give to Scott. Almost lost the ball from behind. He finds Scott, who runs into Sadler, and he'll get three free throws as he chucked up a shot. Great anticipation, and that's how you sense your surroundings. Coach Riley made the Kevin Martin comparison before the game, and I can't think of a better one to describe Vic Sanders. Has that quick, hip-high release. Kevin Martin scored a lot of points in the NBA with the Kings, the Thunder. Played with Minnesota for a little bit, but what he did in the Southern Conference at Western Carolina, Vic Sanders scoring 22 points per game. Similar style and makeup, but he'll miss the first free throw attempt. And he'll miss the second free throw attempt. He was 10 for 11 from the line against Sam Houston, scored 22 and 11 against the Bearcats. He's shooting eight free throw attempts per game after missing the first two. He also misses the third. Bizarre. Peters with the rebound for the Colonels. He'll run, find a flashing and scoring Kamani Jackson. And that is an 8-0 run to start the second half, courtesy of the Colonels. 42 to 40 nickels. The panic and pressure signature of swamp style basketball this season for Nichols. Calendret. A deep dig into the right corner. Reverse to Sherwood, left arc. Calendra at wing left. Johnson playing off. Cutting Sanders, gets to the left block, tries an underhand scoop. He misses it long, a whistle on the floor, and it goes against the Colonels. Tavon Sadler on the clear out, and that is his third foul. Book Sadler picks up two fouls in the first two and a half minutes of the second half, and a big decision for Richie Riley. And he will pull Tavon Sadler. You have no choice, but let's take note of this moment. 17-39 to play in the game, 42 to 40 nickels. Tavon Sadler exits for the Colonels. Right baseline inbound for Calendret. A loop to the right short corner. Blake gives it right back to Calendret. And now Jackson, Colonel Center, he's matching up against the point guard for Idaho. Curl cats to Vic Sanders, but a hold on the right elbow goes against Javon Powell, and Nichols already has four fouls in the first two and a half minutes of the second half. Tavon Sadler in 21 minutes, 16 points, two steals, four of six shooting, eight of ten from the free throw line. Colonels have only attempted 12 free throws in the game. Inbound short corner right to Blake, back out to Calendret right sideline. Two hard dribbles to the left. Tries to float it with the left hand. Leaves it long off the backboard. Jackson seizes the rebound. Here come the Colonels. Cutting across the paint is Peters. Out to Powell for a left corner three. It's long. But an issue on the save. Calendrit saves it to Johnson. His shot is blocked. But Jackson going to work. Gets hit. He's fouled. Free throws for Kimani Jackson. Jordan Scott picks up the foul for Idaho. Chad Sherwood is ready to re-enter 
This will be his first appearance of the second half for the Vandals, and we will see Kimani Jackson head to the line for two freebies. Best game statistically of the season for Kamani, and we still have 17 minutes to play. Kamani Jackson makes the free throw. 43 to 40. Colonel's up three. Already seven points, eight rebounds for Jackson. 17 minutes in the game. And that is also a season high. And he'll knock down both free throw attempts. It's a four point second half lead for the Colonels. Six point halftime deficit wiped out. Colonels plus 10 in the first three minutes of the second half. Left sideline, Sanders quick dribbling, gets to the free throw line, steps away from a couple defenders. Trapped on the right corner, high lob left block. Sherwood comes down with it, powers up, but kicks out to Chad Sherwood, and his brother drills the three from the left wing. Chad Sherwood's second tray of the night, 44-43 Colonels. Kid can shoot it. He had 17 points against SFA in their college basketball invite win last year, and now his brother Ryan, brother Nate, forces the turnover. Peters throws it away, and... Chad Sherwood gets an open left corner three, but he leaves it off the back rim. Free throw line rebound for Kamani Jackson. Colonel possession left corner. Peters, baseline blur and loses the ball out of bounds. It's hacked out of his hands. Brayon Blake, good defense on the sideline against Peters. 16-20 on the clock, 44-43. Colonels with the advantage. Lafayette Rutledge. He is in for the first time in the second half and immediately keep an eye on number three. Hasn't attempted a shot in tonight's game, and that will not last. Rutledge, catch on the inbound right wing. Great close by Chad Sherwood. He will not allow that shot to be taken on his watch. Sideline right, Roddy Peters sizing up Nate Sherwood. A hard hit to the left, and he finishes. Tough angle, difficult release. Left-handed with ease. Ten points for Peters. It's a 46-43 lead for the Colonels. Sanders looking to respond. Having a tough time with the handle. He pushes off on the left corner. Offensive foul on Sanders. Turnover with 15-52 to play in the game. All Colonels in the opening four-plus minutes. Nichols, a 12-3 start against Idaho in the second half. 12 of the first 15 points in half number two, courtesy of the Colonels. It's a 46-43 lead for Nichols. 15.52 to play on ESPN Radio New Orleans. You're watching mobile. Idaho has missed seven of their first eight shots in the second half. Nichols with a 46 to 40 lead. 15-52 to play from Stouffer Jim. Javon Powell, Roddy Peters, Sequavian Smith, Kimani Jackson, and Lafayette Rutledge for the Colonels. Ark McCrutchen just stepped in for the first time in the second half for Idaho. He's Dean up against Kimani Jackson. Colonels find Lafayette Rutledge right corner. 2-3 zone is back for Idaho. Peters right wing, tried to find Jackson, couldn't locate him. Fox at 10. A back away and locate a little space with the clock down to five. Peters heads baseline, leaves his feet and floats it up and in. Tough angle, and you can't blame McCrutchen. He did everything in his power to come up with a stop. Roddy Peters too good. 48-43 Nichols, 12 points for Peters. Backcourt pressure continuing. 
Chad Sherwood. He and Calendret are working in the backcourt. Calendret just getting the offense started with the clock at 18. Rip through move from McCrutchen. Two big up and under, and the pump fake pays off. He scores over Jackson. After missing five games, big bucket for McCrutchen. 48-45 Nichols, second field goal of the night for the native of Moscow, Russia. Playing in Moscow, grew up in Moscow. Three-point lead for the Colonels. Yvonne Powell out of sorts with the offense right now. It's down to 10. Wing right. Peters goes baseline, works around Nate Sherwood and scores it again. Nate Sherwood, what more can he do? Roddy Peters prevailing in the paint. Five-point lead for the Colonels. 50 to 45 with 14.20 to play. Sherwood deep to the right, hoping to take advantage of the mismatch against Peters. Quick give for a right arc, pull up three and knocking it down is Calendret. Shooting 41% on threes this season. He pulls the Vandals to within two. Eight points for Calendret, 50 to 48 Colonels. Crossover left corner, Peters back to work, but he loses a shot long. Calendret with the rebound, this is scary. Calendret in the open floor, takes on everybody, but misses the right-handed finish, and it's out of bounds off of Idaho. Went to the left side of the lane, but still tried to tuck it back under and score off the glass. Every time you see Calendret moving with the head of steam, you think he's just going to leave from the free throw line and dunk on you. Had a big jam in the opening five minutes of the game. Hard not to think about the dunk he had against Cal State Bakersfield a week and a half ago. There's a screenshot of that dunk that they posted on the Idaho Twitter page, and it's Cal Poly's players getting ready for their game, and about 12 of them are sitting behind the backboard, and everybody's face is on the, well, different look for every player, but everybody's jaw is on the floor and in absolute amazement of what the 6-2 guard was able to do. But the Colonels D up against Calendret. They forced the stop, and now it's Nichols' ball. Backing in is Peters. Gets into two defenders. He gets chipped by Crutchen, and he'll get free throws. The Crutchen came over late for the hip hit. And that body bump is all it took for Nichols to return to the free throw line, a place that has provided so many memorable moments this season. It has been the happy place for the Nichols men's basketball team. Roddy Peters trying to find some success from the line this season with the Colonels, one of the top free throw shooting teams in all the Southland Conference. They're down to 70% on the year, but they've been living at 70 to 74%. After missing the first, Peters will switch the second. And it's a 15-point performance for Roddy Peters following the worst shooting performance of his season against UL. 51-48, to Colonels, 13-25 to play. Javon Powell, Dean up against Allen. Beats him to midcourt, and they try a wing to left block. Wow, McCrutchen challenged by Jackson and fouled below the rim. I'll tell you one thing. Ark McCrutchen will lead the big sky in pump fakes this season. Used three of them to get a bucket on his last possession. And Kamani Jackson did a good job not buying and bypassing those pump fakes. But the 6'7", 225-pounder eventually was able to get Kamani to leave his feet. Two free throws for Ark McCrutchen. And he will connect on the first. Only his fourth free throw attempt of the year. Played in the opener. Dislocated his knee in the second half against Nevada. Was expected to be out two to four weeks, and here we are two and a half weeks since the injury. He's back on the floor for Idaho, and he will make both free throws. Vandals are within one. Back and forth we go, 51 to 50 Nichols, and a hand check on the right sideline. Idaho could not resist the urge to reach in on Peters, and Chad Sherwood picks up the foul. Sanders, Allen, Chad Sherwood, Bray on Blake, and Ark McCrutchen in the game for Idaho. We've got Peters, Roberton, Rutledge, Smith, and Javon Powell for Nichols. Double screen set for Peters. Iso set as he heads to the hoop, but he walks with it. Turnover, Nichols. Ten first half turnovers for the Colonels. Only their second in the first seven minutes of the second half. Idaho started one for seven from the floor in the second half. They've hit two of their last three shots, and they're ready to retake the lead. Trayvon Allen. 
Rarely looks for a shot, trying to pace the game as a backup point guard and give Calendret some rest. Sets up the wide open shot that's missed in the left arc, but an offensive rebound and put back by Blake is in. He cleans up the Sanders miss, and Brayon Blake, a double-double, 16 points, 10 rebounds. His return to South Louisiana going better than anyone could have expected. Colonel's down by one. Rutledge, catch on the left arc, fights through and gets past Sanders. Idaho not switching on these screens. They're trying to keep their athleticism and stay on the perimeter. Rutledge pulls a trigger, deep right wing three, in and out. Zaquavian Smith tracks down the loose ball, tips it to the left wing. Powell saves it, new shot clock for Nichols. Smith, he'll shoot a right arc three, bad look, and he misses it off right. Brayon Blake leads the big sky in defensive rebounds. He gets his ninth of the game. It's Vandal Ball. They lead it by one. Allen. Head of steam as he heads to the left, rolls to the rim, floats it short. Offensive rebound by McCrutchen, and he's fouled by legend Roberton. Nichols and Idaho trading punches in the second half. It's the Vandals reasserting their strength. McCrutchen back to the free throw line for a couple more attempts when we return to Thibodeau. Idaho had an eight-point lead heading to the final possession of the first half. Colonel scored, made it a six-point game with the half, and then Nichols jumped out to a fast and furious start in the opening three minutes of the second half. Actually had a five-point lead, but Idaho back on top, 52-51 to with 11.54 to play on ESPN Radio New Orleans. Locally owned. Are you in good hands? All state agents. Back and forth we go. 52 to 51 Idaho. 11:54 to play in the game. Free throws for Ark McCrutchen, senior forward who grew up in Portland. Born in Moscow, Russia, now representing the Idaho Vandals in Moscow, Idaho. And they have missed his services the last five games. And he will swish another free throw attempt. McCrutchen had a slow start in this game, but he's made three straight from the line, 53 to 51 Vandals. After losing in the semifinals of the Big Sky Tournament to North Dakota last year, Idaho putting together a strong start in non-conference. They want to win the conference tournament this year. McCrutchen misses the second free throw. Colonels come up with a defensive rebound, but they throw it away at midcourt. Idaho gives it right back. Peters, his first dunk of the season. 53-53. An out-of-sort sequence for both teams. But the Colonels come out on top. Calendret and Powell. They're going toe-to-toe -to -toe at midcourt. Calendret using his left hand to head left. Scoops it in the left corner. Allen, a quick give to the left block, and Brayon Blake jumps over two defenders and scores off the window. 55-53 Vandals. Career-high 18 points for Brayon Blake. Welcome back to Louisiana. Lived here for two years when he was a kid. First time back in the Pelican State. Sadler, left elbow face, shoots a 14-footer, rattles in and out, but a mid-air put back by the smallest player on the floor. Zaquavian Smith. The tip-in makes it 55-55. What a way for Quay to come up with his first field goal tonight. Calendret bumps his way into the front court. He's keeping Powell at a distance. Javon Powell doing his best to stay in front of Perion Calendret. Fox at 10. Calendret, right corner bounce pass. Now to the right block. The crutchin heading middle, left-handed hook shot short over Jackson, but a foul. Frustration building as a couple critical calls have gone against the Colonels. 
Colonels trying to keep their cool. As Kimani Jackson got caught on the hip, took away the middle for McCrutchen. And even though Kimani stayed grounded, McCrutchen was able to draw the foul call, and he'll get free throws. And Colonel Assistant Coach Amora Morgan trying to get the attention of Zaquavian Smith and Javon Powell and saying, hey, I know you're frustrated, but we just got a warning. Cannot afford a technical. Don't let it get to you. And Javon Powell just looked over at the Colonel Assistant Coaches and gave them the, the look that said, we hear you. Too close of a game. Cannot let the emotions get the best of you. And after making the first, McCrutchen will sink the second. Two-point lead for Idaho. McCrutchen five for six from the free throw line. He has been so steady in his four years in Moscow. Two-point lead for the Vandals, ten minutes to play. Peters breaks the three-quarter court pressure. Vandals fall back into their 2-3 zone. It's Allen and Callendrup playing together up top as Peters beats them both, floats it from 10 feet, leaves it off the back rim. Nate Sherwood with the rebound. Quiet night for the number two score for the Vandals, but he'll set the stage for a Blake post up. Right block against Boog. He bounces it to the left elbow. Scott won't shoot it. And with 15 seconds on the clock, Callendrup palms it with his left hand. He's ready for late shot clock execution. To Scott for a right wing three. It barely hits the rim. Easy rebound, Roddy Peters. He'll push tempo to the right arc. Allen will play off, and it's Javon Powell straight away. Jackson demanding the ball on the block. They finally get it to him off block right. Two hard dribbles. Powers up and draws the foul against Sherwood. The emerging toughness of Kimani Jackson proving to be the difference in tonight's game. Season high, which is in turn on the verge of being a career high performance for Kimani. Eight points, nine rebounds, and this is in his third straight start. Colonels struggled to find a role for him early in the season. Distant memory of the way Kamani has played the last couple games, but he will miss the first free throw attempt. Maurice O'Field should be back in the next couple weeks. He had the MCL strain that he suffered at Western Kentucky. That opened the door for more minutes for Kamani. This is a guy that played 41 games for Larry Eustachie at Colorado State. Larry Stacey had a great start to his career at Idaho. Went 61 and 33 in three seasons with Idaho before he left for Utah State. Kimani loved playing for Larry Stacey. He, he, of course, is not for every player, special kind of coach. But Kimani transferred after receiving his communications degree over the summer from CSU, and he'll make the free throw. Nine points for him. Colonels are within one. Sherwood, deep right corner, hard dribble right. No one stops him, and that is a deafening dunk. And Sherwood will let everybody know about it. Wow, Nate Sherwood, 59, 56 Vandals. Six points for Sherwood, and he averages almost 15 a game. Peters will stay center circle. Look back to Powell, right arc. Now give to Peters, left sideline. Touch pass, middle of the paint for a 10-foot fadeaway. Sadler drills it, and a quick timeout by Richie Riley. Tavon Sadler back in the game and playing with three fouls. 20 points on Friday, 18 tonight. 30-second timeout with the Colonels trailing 59-58 to against Idaho. This game has been as good as advertised. Idaho went 12-6 in the Big Sky last year. They crushed Stephen F. Austin in the College Basketball Insiders Tournament. They won 73-50. to They were not pleased to be in the CBI, but they made the most of it. Had a big back and forth game against North Dakota in the semis of the Big Sky Tournament. Ended up losing by five. But they woke up in October of 2017 as the preseason favorites to win the Big Sky. First time since their Big West days that Idaho was a preseason favorite to win a conference. And they have put together a strong start to this season. They lost at the Lawler Event Center to Eric Musselman in Nevada to open the season, but they've won four of their last five. Probably should have had the win against Bakersfield. Cal State Bakersfield, they won the 
WAC Conference Tournament last year. They shot New Mexico State. They have a really good team this season, but they were down 12 in the second half to Idaho. They went on a 17-0 run, had the lead, had a one-point lead with nine seconds to play, and Vic Sanders was at the free throw line. Ended up missing the attempt for Idaho, and that allowed Bakersfield to pull away with the victory. With 8.53 to play in half number two against Nichols, Idaho clinging to a one-point lead. Sadler, Smith, Powell, Jackson. Peters in the game for Nichols. Trayvon Allen. Midcourt give to Scott. Challenges Jackson, but he loses the ball late. It's on the floor. Jackson came up with it, but Jordan Scott walks with it. He pulled the ball away from Kimani Jackson. Was unable to get rid of it or put the ball on the floor and dribble away. Scott on the turnover, visibly frustrated with himself as he also took an inadvertent hit to his left eye. And Scott will signal to Coach Verlin that he has to come out for a split second. Well, now Jordan Scott tells Don Verlin, no, I'm fine. Don't pull me. And Don Verlin will deny the request, and Scott will get a break. Jordan Scott, his brother, tore up Nichols. Well, Josh Scott destroyed everybody in, in his Colorado career, but we saw his brother get 20 points and six rebounds against Nichols in the Colonels in Colorado game a couple years ago. But Jordan Scott has to exit. Colonels trailing by a point. Javon Powell ready for a right wing three. It's off the back rim, but he tips it to Zaquavian Smith. New shot clock. Great effort by Javon Powell. Peters, attack right. Slip the pass middle, but Trayvon Allen steals it, and Idaho has possession. Calendret shovels it off to the right wing. Quick give from Sanders to the left block, and Sherwood, he gets hammered from behind. Free throws for Nate Sherwood. Sanders, Allen, and Calendret, all three touched the ball in this possession, and neither held on to it for more than a split second. Efficiency of this Vandal offense, and it's been the biggest difference in tonight's game with the Colonels trying to come back and turn what is now a one-point deficit into some kind of advantage. But every time Nichols is able to take the lead, Idaho has an answer, and Nate Sherwood will connect on his first free throw attempt. 60 to 58 Vandals. Career year for Sherwood. Had a medical red shirt after six games in his freshman season. 75th game of his career. 14 points, five rebounds, two assists per game. But the 96% free throw shooter finally misses. He was 27 for his last 28. He misses this one off right. Colonel Ball trailing by two. 7.50 to play, and Kevin Johnson will steady the offense. True freshman trying to design a way to break this difficult vandal zone. 2-3 zone causing a lot of problems. Johnson finally hoists the left wing three, leaves it long. Kimani Jackson on the floor fighting for the rebound, but it's a jump ball. Possession will stay with the Colonels, and Nichols will have a chance to tie or take the lead when we return for the final seven and a half minutes. It's a 60-58 to 58 game. Vandals maintaining a two-point advantage. They had an eight-point lead in the final second to the first half. Colonel scored a field goal. Basically, his time expired to make it a six-point deficit at the half. Colonels have led by as many as five in the second half, but it's a two-point lead for Idaho with 7.33 to play on ESPN Radio New Orleans. Tavon Sadler and Roddy Peters. 
They've combined for 35 of the Cardinals' 58 points. Idaho leads it 60 to 58. But Sadler and Peters, 13 for 20 from the floor, 18 for Sadler, 17 for Peters. Peters will take a quick rest for the final seven and a half minutes. Sadler, he's in the game along with Johnson, Jackson, Zaquavian, Smith, and Javon Powell. And it's Sadler going to work. No one can stop him. A right-hand finish at the rim. He falls to the floor but scores it first. He ties his career high. He's up to 20 points, and we are tied at 60. Calendret trying to calm this Idaho offense. But Javon Powell gets in his way and bats the ball out of bounds on a right sideline pass. And here comes Roddy Peters. Stretch run. Kevin Johnson will take a break. And Colonel Coaching Staff immediately giving KJ some love and applauding his effort tonight. His defense has been the biggest difference in this game. He's helped slow down Calendret, which is difficult to do. Powell now matching up against Perry on Calendret. Chad Sherwood has it left arc, passes it to his brother. Nate Sherwood left corner, steps into an 18-footer and drills it. Pump fake, that's all it took, slide step to the right. And Sherwood is up to nine points. He scored five straight for Idaho, 62 to 60 Vandals. Sadler at the right arc to the free throw line, now backs away to Peters. Swings it left corner, floater from the baseline, up and out by Powell, it was halfway home. Nate Sherwood has the rebound for Idaho. Chad Sherwood in the left wing. His bounce to the block is kicked by Sadler. 6.29 to play. Vandals up two. And they will have an inbound with the shot clock at 24 seconds. The 100-year anniversary of this Vandal nickname. How many programs in the country had their athletic moniker given to them by a student newspaper? Deep left corner, Calendred against Jackson. He'll pull up over Kimani and leave it short. Kimani size, big factor in that play. Powell with the rebound up to Zaquavian Smith. Transition left arc three is off the right of the rim, and Blake has the rebound. Idaho willing to run. Calendred pass to the trailing Blake. He won't try to stick the straightaway three. It's off to Vic Sanders. He's at the right arc with Javon Powell staying in front of him. To Sherwood, left elbow. Now to the left short corner. Blake backing in. Sadler's hook shot is off left, but there, there's Nate Sherwood everywhere. Another offensive rebound. The 6'8", 210-pound redshirt junior from Albany, Oregon. New shot clock, and he gives it to his brother. And Chad Sherwood, second time tonight. He and Nate Sherwood have teamed up for a three. Third three of the game for Sherwood. He came in one for eight in his last three games. He's given the Vandals a five-point lead. Peters slide to the right elbow. Chad Sherwood getting right in his face. Peters will shoot over him. Right wing three off right. Right block rebound. Bray on Blake. Career highs across the board for Blake. Points and rebounds. 18 points, 13 rebounds, and a five-point lead with five minutes to play for Idaho. Nate Sherwood catch at the free throw line. Out to the right arc for a three by Blake. Why not? Bray on Blake. Hits the three, and it's 68 to 60 Vandals. He went to Garfield High School in Seattle, a program that produced Brandon Roy and also has a couple famous alumni, Jimi Hendrix, Quincy Jones, Macklemore, Bray on Blake. Sweet home, Louisiana. 21 points, 13 rebounds, and a 68-60 to 60 lead for the Vandals. We're going to have to blame this one on Daryl Adams. Colonel cornerback. He's referred to by Brayon as his best friend, as his brother. It's amazing where life can take you. For two years, Brayon called Louisiana home. He's 10 and 11 years old, running around in rural Baton Rouge was out in Janiesville with Daryl Adams. Daryl stuck with football and has become one of the best cornerbacks in the Southland Conference, one of the best players in the FCS level, especially in the Southland. And here's Brayon balling out in front of Daryl Adams and a number of the Colonel football players. Nichols looking to respond. They trail by eight, 4.55 to play. Sequavian Smith, wing right, is in front of the Colonel bench. They reverse left arc. Tavon Sadler 
Dribbles low into Scott, can't take the shot. Goes to Smith, right corner, runs into two defenders, loses the ball. Chad Sherwood tips it away to Jordan Scott, who has the steal. Sanders, quick move, no look handle, and the dunk. Nasty. Idaho peeling potatoes on the Colonels in a courtside look at an incredible dunk. Oof, 70 to 60 plus one. And the Idaho bench, they are still up and celebrating a monster slam. And Victor Sanders, he went between his legs to set things up on that throwdown for Calendret. And how many SC top ten dunks will we see by season's end for Perry on Calendret? He'll miss the free throw. Doesn't matter. You already have the dunk. Kamani Jackson on the rebound. Colonels have to answer. Largest deficit of the night. Colonels led by five in the second half. Now they trail by ten. Sadler. He's at the point. Won't take the three. Back to Powell. Left dark. He will. Shoots over two defenders, but he front rims it. It's short. Nate Sherwood, right block rebound for Idaho. Secondary break to Sanders. He wanted to pull the trigger on a right arc three. Victor Sanders with four minutes to play. He gets it to Calendret. Now back to the left arc. He'll use the screen. Push it to the middle. But an offensive foul is called on the paint. Jordan Scott, he cleared out right outside the restricted area. Four minutes to play, and this will determine the fate of the Colonels in their final home game in a couple weeks. Media timeout with four minutes to play. 70 to 60 Vandals on ESPN Radio New Orleans. After a one for seven start in the second half, Idaho has connected on nine of their last 16 shots, but it's been their defense that has caused the most problems for the Colonels and what is now a 10 point deficit for Nichols. 70 to 60 Idaho, four minutes to play. Colonels came in making 13 three pointers a game. They hit their first of the night. They've missed 17 in a row. Colonel possession in the right front court, Peters. Heads hard to the hoop, gets to the rim, scores it with the right hand, and there was nothing Perion Calendret could do about it. 19 points for Peters, 70 to 62 Vandals. Chad Sherwood take the rock into the front court, gets it back to Sanders at midcourt, puts the ball behind his back, clears, and has some separation from Johnson. Clock at 15. They loop it back to the left arc. Nate Sherwood heads middle, loses the ball briefly, gets it back to Jordan Scott, clock at 10. Into the left corner, Calendar at all alone for three, but he leaves it long. Free throw line rebound, Tavon Sadler. Two on three for the Colonels. Rutledge trails, catches, left wing three. It's off left, but a left block rebound for Kimani Jackson. New shot clock for the Colonels. Rutledge without a field goal tonight. Left baseline drive, Sadler overpowers Sherwood and draws the foul, and that's the fourth on Nate Sherwood. Davon made his first seven free throws of the night. He's eight for 10 in the game, but these will be his first free throws of the second half. Came up with a career high 20 points in Friday night's loss to the University of Louisiana. 20 points in 25 minutes tonight. Davon Sadler, new career high. He makes the first and it's a seven point game with 3.06 to play. Idaho has turned it over 15 times tonight. They're a 79% free throw shooting team. A couple factors to keep in mind with the Colonels trying to come back in three minutes on the clock. 
It'll be double bonus for the rest of the game for Idaho. Davon Sadler, two for two. He swishes them both, and we have a two-possession game. We're right back to where we started in the opening minutes of half number two. It was a six-point game at the half. It's 70 to 64 Idaho. Inbound right sideline and a touch pass back to Victor Sanders. Against Book Sadler, keeps him on his back, heads to midcourt, picks up his dribble. Two bounces to get it over to the right sideline, and Blake will relocate the ball back to Calendret. Clock at 15, game clock at 250. 70 to 64 Idaho. Midcourt, it's Sanders, gets a push off, heads to the hoop, and draws the foul. And it was a light push off, completely legal, just enough to clear space. And that extension, it gives Vic Sanders enough room to dribble the ball along the right sideline and head to the free throw line for two big attempts. Sanders missed three free throws after being fouled early in the second half. Came in at 80% on the season. And this to make it a seven or eight point game. Top scorer in the big sky, top three-point shooter in the big sky. Average four points per game as a freshman. 15 as a sophomore, 20 as a junior, up to 22 as a senior, and he will make the free throw attempt. Long overdue for Sadler. 12 points in the game, two of five from the line. Credit to the Vandals. They have a seven-point lead, and their top score has been an afterthought offensively. Chad Sherwood, how big have the three three-pointers off the bench been for Idaho? Big Sanders, two for two. Eight-point lead for Idaho, 2.43 on the clock. Sooner or later, the Colonels have to hit another three. Peters runs into his own player, gets it back to Rutledge, deep outside the left arc. Colonel offense out of sorts. Peters... Left wing, drives it to the block, somehow scores over Nate Sherwood. And that's a 21-point performance for the Maryland transfer. 72 to 66. Vandals have their lead cut to six. Sanders snaps the ball across midcourt, turns away from Sadler, now jumps over to the right lane, bumps into Rutledge. Block is called on Rutledge. Sanders threw the ball off the backboard, and it went in. They'll count the bucket. Vic Sanders toying with the Colonel defense. A bewildering sequence, but Sanders comes out on top. And after making two free throws on the previous trip down the floor, it's an eight-point lead for the Vandals. Vic Sanders looking to add on and make it a three-point play. And he will. Nine-point lead for Idaho, 2.13 to play. Sadler and Peters going right to left. Peters, left side of the floor. Sprint screen set by Jackson. Back out to the left arc. Peters being dared to shoot the three by Calendred and said he heads back to the hoop. Right-handed scoop long. Nate Sherwood with the left block rebound. Idaho has a three-on-one with Sanders at midcourt. No look for a blank dunk. And that's how you hammer home an official homecoming response. Brayon Blake, 23 points. That's a game high. It's an 11-point lead for Idaho. Colonels right back at you. Floater inside the free throw line by Tavon Sadler. 77 to 68 Idaho. 100 seconds to play as Johnson just misses a steal on the inbound. Idaho at midcourt. And with great free throw shooters everywhere on the floor for the Vandals, who can you foul? Clock's at 15. Do or die time for the Nichols defense. Sherwood. Touch at the free throw line. Back to Sanders. Straight away three. It's off the back rim. Sadler with the rebound at the free throw line. Colonels with a chance. Right arc Sadler spins into two defenders for an offensive foul. Fourth foul on Sadler. Bray on Blake. Jordan Scott, they were ready for the move. And Bray on Blake. A night he will never forget. Started at a junior college in Flagstaff. Went to beautiful Coeur d'Alene, Idaho, to play with one of the best junior college teams in the country his freshman and sophomore season. From North Idaho College to Idaho, career-high performance everywhere. Rebounds, points, field goals. Minute to play, nine-point lead for Idaho, and finally a foul. 
Roddy Peters, his third of the night as Perion Calendret will get two free throws. He is your best option amongst those on the floor to foul. Don Verlin elected to pull Blake from the game. He struggled from the line this season. Send Chad Sherwood in and everybody on the floor except Calendret was plus 77% on the line this season. Calendret a 68% free throw shooter. Calendret on his first attempt, and he is unable to hit it. He has two of the greatest dunks you will see in a college basketball game as one in the first half, another in the second half. Ten points, three rebounds, no assists. You have locked up Calendret and Sanders, 25 points between those two. They average 37 per night. And Calendret misses both free throws. Sadler with the board for the Colonels. They're down nine, 55 seconds to play. Rutledge left corner, jump pass left wing for a Sadler three. It's off right. Right block rebound, Chad Sherwood. And Idaho, 42 seconds away from a big non-conference win at Nichols. Sanders still hasn't been fouled. Wing to the right, Colonels finally foul, and they'll put Nate Sherwood on the line, and he is top five in the country in free throws and makes and percentage. First in the big sky, 10th in D1, but he did miss a free throw on his last trip to the line. Nate Sherwood, a slow starter, but he's up to 9.7 rebounds and three assists, and he will nail his first free throw attempt to make it 78 to 68 Vandals. Idaho has struggled from the line tonight. They're 14 for 23 on free throws, 10 for 18 in the second half. UL was 36 for 54 from the line on Friday. Colonels couldn't capitalize. Similar story with Idaho tonight, struggling from the line, but they are up big. Both free throws are in, and it's a 79 to 68 lead for Idaho. 34 seconds to play. Vandals. Approaching their fifth win in seven tries. This will drop the Colonels to four and five on the season. 25 seconds to play. Johnson to the right arc, slashing to the elbow. Eight footers up and short by Sadler. Rebounded by Blake. He gets one more. And that's all she wrote from Thibodeau tonight. Colonels will not foul. And with 10 seconds to play, Idaho will dribble it out. Bray on Blake, a homecoming for the ages. Two of the most important years of his life were spent in rural Louisiana. Lived outside of Baton Rouge with his mom before moving back to Seattle. 23 points, 14 rebounds, career high in points, boards, and made field goals. And he did it all with 12 members of his family sitting behind the Idaho bench. Without Blake, who knows what the result of tonight's game would have been. Colonels did an excellent job, and they went toe-to-toe. -to -toe with a really good Idaho team, but fell a little bit short. We'll recap tonight's loss for the Colonels. Idaho improves to five and two on the season. Colonels, they slipped to four and five following a 73 to 64 loss to Idaho on ESPN Radio New Orleans. Good news, bad news for the Colonels following a 79-68 loss against Idaho. Good news, Nichols was 25 for 37 on two-point field goals. Truly an efficient and organized offense that freed up a lot of points in the paint for Tavon Sadler and Roddy Peters. 
career-high 24 points for Tavon Sadler. You get 21 from Ronnie Peters. Bad news, perimeter shooting, normally a strength for Nichols, non-existent tonight. Colonels go one for 20 on three-pointers. Missed 19 in a row. Colonels hit a three to open the game, but after the make by Javon Powell, that was it. And the result is a sluggish second half, a lead a few minutes into half number two. Colonels were down six at the half. They ended up jumping out to a five-point advantage. But Idaho, especially their interior defense, Colonels stopped scoring in the paint. Turnovers intensified. Colonels finished with 15 turnovers in the game, a manageable amount, but they had no answer for Brayon Blake. Career-high 23 points for him. He had four players in double figures for Idaho. But you, you wonder what the result of this game would be if Chad Sherwood elected to not go off tonight. Chad Sherwood, three three-pointers in the game. He's been one of the best shooters in Idaho history, but had been a slow starter this season. Had missed seven of his last eight shots over the previous three games. Wasn't scoring at all. Only about a point and a half per game this season. Hit his first shot, and as all shooters know, you, you give me one, I'll take two, and I'll, I'll just keep taking them until you stop me. Ends up hitting three big threes, and that was all she wrote as the Colonels pick up an important victory. Uh, two games ago, had a nice opportunity to turn the attention to UL and Idaho, but following a win against Presbyterian, different story this weekend. Colonels lose at the buzzer to the University of Maryland, Baltimore County. They come back home, lose 105-80 to against UL. Final score tonight, 79-68 to against Idaho. One of the best in the big sky. They are expected to be an NCAA tournament team this season. One of the top mid-major programs in the country. Certainly not a bad loss for the Colonels. But now you have a long time to think about it. We won't get a chance to do this again until December the 16th. Casey Disclair will be on the call for the Culver-Stockton game against Nichols on ESPN1003.com. And then we'll be back at it against Tulane on December 18th. Mobile comes to town on December 20th. And then a Pacific Northwest road trip into Seattle to take on Seattle U. And it's conference season in Northwestern State and Nichols, December 28th on ESPN Radio New Orleans. Colonels fall short tonight. 79-68 to is our final. Thanks for hanging out with us Sunday night in Thibodeau, Louisiana. And it's Idaho picking up their fifth win in seven games. Colonels fall to 4-5 and five on the season. For Truck Just Glare, for Joey D, for Todd back at the ESB in New Orleans studios, my name is Bryant Johnson. You've been listening and watching the home of Colonel Basketball, ESB in Radio New Orleans. Hello. This